Right. Okay, today we're looking at multiplying decimals by multiples of 10. And it's a little bit harder than yesterday because we only multiplied by um, a single digit. Today we're going to look at how uh, to combine the idea of our place value understandings and multiplication all into one. All right, so let's do a little bit of a revision and a little bit of a reminder. A little bit harder than yesterday because yesterday was involving tenths and today it's involving um, hundreds. So we've got three hundreds. Now remember when we say a decimal, um, the fraction name we use comes from the position of the digit in the last place value. So you've got ones, tenths, hundreds. There's a three in the hundreds place value. So that fraction is called three hundredths. Nine hundredths, eight hundredths, two hundredths. All right. So these pretty much are, if you're uh, on the ball at the moment with um, the way you've been thinking about your maths, you should spot number facts straight away. Can you see a number fact in there? 3 times 6, 8 times 3, 9 times 5, 2 times 9. So if I look at the first one, 3 times 6, 3 sixes are 18. You can see the 18 in the answer. But it's this um, as a different place value. It's not ones because six threes are 18 if it was a three ones times six. It's not tenths, it's actually hundreds. When we have hundreds, we know that we need two numbers following the decimal point, and that's what we have there. Okay, have a quick go at those next three. You should only have to pause the video for a very short moment and then come back and check your answers. And we're back. Three eighths are 24, so three lots of eight hundredths is 24 hundredths. Five nines are 45, so five times nine hundredths, 45 hundredths. Nine twos are 18, and again, 18 hundredths. All right, let's go on. I've got three more sums here that are all going a little bit more uh, complicated. Now, obviously, one of the most common places that we have hundredths is involving money and we have two decimal places after, um, or to indicate the cents when we're dealing with money. So if you look at A, you've got 35 cents times eight. And I've again set it out in vertical format. So there are three here to do, and I'll work through the first one with you to give you a bit of a reminder. So let's have a look at the first one together. Or if you wanna go ahead and do it by yourself, you can pause the video and just work independently. But otherwise, Five eighths, or eight times five, is 40. Put down the zero, carry the four. Then we multiply by the next place value, the three. Eight times three is 24, plus that four is 28. Now the last thing we need to do is work out where the decimal point goes. And it's easiest counting. If I look at how many numbers follow the decimal point in this whole area, I will see there are one, two. And so in my answer, the decimal point is placed between the two and the eight so that two numbers follow the decimal point. And of course, two and 80 hundredths in money is $2.80. Pause the video if you didn't do all three before, pause it now, have a go at the other two by yourself and come back in a moment. Right, let's check how you went. $2.83 multiplied by nine and $24 and eight cents multiplied by three. There are our answers. Check how you went. Look at the carrying and make sure that you're carrying in the right position. Now, if you made a mistake, you can rewind the video and have another go and then check your work. Or you can um, just pause and have another go yourself anyway. Right, let's move on. Now, this is a little bit different, this activity, because here we have um, the multiplications, but as you can see, instead of it being multiplied by two in A, it's multiplied by 20. In B, it's multiplied by 800, and in C, it's multiplied by 3000. So we're taking that little step further again, and we're combining our understanding of the multiples or powers of 10. So we're going to actually use those strategies to help us out. 
Now all we have to do is work out which of those three answers is the most reasonable estimate. And so if we look at $4.62 times 20, it's going to be not exactly any of those, but it will be close. So let's look at A together, and then you can work through B and C yourself. So if I'm to do A, this is my thinking. I would round $4.62 to something that I can easily manage, $5. And I'd multiply that by 20. Now I know that $5 times 20 can be done more easily as a mental strategy if I go and break up the 20 and the 2 times 10. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Now that's my uh, rough estimate. So if I'm adjusting it to know that it would be smaller than that, I'm looking at those three there and thinking to myself, which one of those is closest? And of course, the closest one is 90. And so there's my estimate there. So using similar thinking, and you can even keep this on screen when you pause it so that you can see how to do it, have a go at B and C yourselves. Pause the video now and complete the next two to identify the best estimate. Pause now. Welcome back. Let's check your working and see if your thinking is along these lines. So if I'm looking at B, I'm going to round 54 metres down to 0.5. You should be able to do that quite easily because 0.5 is a half. A half times 800 is what I'd be doing. So if I broke 800 up into 8 times 100, a half of 8 is 4. 4 times 100, 400. So 400 is my closest answer. And there's it. That would be the best estimate in that situation. And in C, my thinking would go like this. 3.21 uh, um, litres or 3 litres and 21 hundredths is rounded down to 3. 3 times 3,000. Well, you don't really have to break it up, but it's easy enough to go 3 times 3 times 1,000. Either which way, you'd come up with 9 lots of 1,000 to be a 9,000. 9,000 litres, and there's the best estimate in that situation. How did you go with your estimation in that case? A little bit of a different application of your understanding, but a good practice nonetheless. All right, here's another way that we can look at it, and it's a bit more interesting than this one. So we've got various animals that are all known for their ability to jump. So we've got the length of the animal and then a rough idea of how far that animal can jump in terms of its own body length. So work through each of these. Don't forget to write your measurement in as well. So pause the video and work through each of those. Welcome back. Now, you would have noticed that the measures are quite different and in some cases, for example, if you look at the frog hopper, 0 0.0006 of a metre. It's not really the most common way that we'd um, look at those measures, but they have been done in, on purpose to test your ability to solve these. So how did you go? Well, there's a jumping spider. Now, if I multiply 16 millimetres by 100, I get 1,600 millilitres. So you can see the 16 is written in both. Two zeros, because it was multiplied by 100, have been placed here. To put it into an idea of something a bit easier for you, uh, 1,600 millimetres is 160 centimetres, or 1.6 metres. Now, that's a fairly decent jump for a little spider. Do you know what a clip springer is? That's what a clip springer is. It's an antelope that lives in Africa. Now, it is approximately 1.5 metres in size and it can jump up to 10 times its own length, 15 metres. The bullfrog, charming looking fellow that he is, can jump 10 times its body length, 120 centimetres is 1.2 metres. A frog hopper is actually a little insect and it can jump 100 times its body length. So if it's only 0 0.006 of a metre, 
a hundred times that is 0.6 of a metre or 60 centimetres. Grasshoppers, well we know those, but I wonder if you've ever seen a colourful one like that. 5 times 30 is 150. 150 centimetres, 1.5 metres. A flea, 200 times 1 is 200 millimetres or 20 centimetres. And a kangaroo rat, 50 times um, 11 thousandths. 5 elevens are 55, so 50 elevens would be 550, which moves it up that two place values. 0.55 of a metre is 55 centimetres, or just over half a metre. And here's some more. This time it's about how strong animals are and how much of their body weight they can lift. So we're talking about a gorilla, our chap over here, a leaf cutter ant. I'll put an example of uh, what they look like there. We've got the weight of each animal in kilograms for the first one, grams for the later ones, and supposedly how much they can lift. So again, pause the video and calculate these multiples of 10. All right, we're back. How'd you go? Let's look at our gorilla first of all. 170 kilograms times 10 is 1,700 kilograms, which is actually 1.7 ton. That's a fairly strong gorilla. 50 times 5 grams. Well, earlier I talked about 0 0.5 and recognising that straight away as a half. So a half of 50 is 25. Now I've put in a bit of extra information here. So 20 grams times 1,000 is 20,000 grams, which is 20 kilograms. That's quite incredible. I don't know about that one, though I did look it up because I was interested. And I know that some of these figures have been um, rounded just to help us out. So the rhinoceros, the rhinoceros beetle can lift 850 times their own weight. That came off the internet. So they've just set a thousand for this particular exercise to make the maths a bit easier for you, as I've said over here. But it's still an interesting fact that it can lift many, many, many times its own body weight. And the final one, an ant, at 0 0.003 of a gram multiplied by 100 is 3 grams. Okay. Here's a little bit more of a practice. These ones are to do with the sporting theme. So hidden in those, you should see a number fact. 0 or 4 tenths times 7, should you should recognise that that's uh, 4 sevens. 4 sevens, of course, are 28. And so you should have the digits 2 and 8 in each of those. Um, but its place value is going to change, of course, because we're multiplying by multiples of 10 or powers of 10. Now, you've got two ways that you can go about doing this one. If you are very confident, then in a moment I'll say pause the video. But if you're not as confident with some of these, I'll give you a bit of extra help. And what I'll do is I'll actually give you the first answers, and then you'd pause the video and um, work through them using that first one as a bit of extra support. So if you're very confident, pause now. And if you need a little bit more support, I'm going to give you the first two answers. So four uh, tenths times seven is two and eight tenths. And two decimal eight, or two and eight tenths times six is 16 decimal eight. If you didn't pause before, pause now and work through the next ones using your understanding of powers of 10. Remember, in this one, the two and the eight will be in all answers. And in this one, the one, the six and the eight must occur in all three spots. So pause now and complete the other two. Let's see how you went. All right, so I said before, the two and the eight has to be in there. But they have moved up one place value larger than our previous answer because we've multiplied by an extra power of 10. Instead of multiplying by 7, we multiplied by 70. And then when we multiply by 700, again, it's going to move up a place value. In a similar way, 168 will be in this answer, but again, one place value higher. 168 pushing another place value higher with the zero. 
Here's another three. And again, I'll do exactly as I did before. So you can pause almost immediately and work through the three yourself independently, or you can wait until I give you the first two to help you along. So pause now if you're going to do that. And if you're going to have a little bit of extra help, I'm going to tell you what the first two answers are. So 12 and 3 tenths times 4 is 49 and 2 tenths. And 8 decimal 26 times 9 is 74 and 34 tenths. So again, keep your place values in mind. Pause now and have a go at the next two. All right. I hope that you're able to use your understanding of place values in these ones. So there are the next two answers, and you can see the 4, the 9, and the 2 all are written down, but the place value continues to change as you multiply by larger and larger multiples. And 7434, 3, 4, again in all three of those. How did you go? I hope you gain in confidence with multiplying by um, or decimals and fractions by both whole numbers and multiples of 10. Okay, I'm going to do something a bit different today. Here are some facts about some of those animals that we talked about before. So I've pulled up a bit of extra information about the clip springer. You can see an adult and a baby, and then the parts of Africa that that animal comes from. And it actually says the antelope's name and comes from Afrikaans for rock jumper. And it says that it's able to um, live up to that name because it does like to live in very rocky areas, as you can see in that picture. And um, you will quite often see pictures of them standing very still on tops of rocks. And that's because usually one is on the lookout while the other one's feeding. So if you look closely, you will quite often see another one, its mate, nearby. Over on this one, we've got the pictures of two leafcutter ants. Now, I would have often thought myself that the leafcutter ants ate the leaves, but in fact they don't. It says, what do they do with all those pieces of leaves? Well, they plant them. And it says they actually uh, only eat a special type of fungus. And so when they take these leaf, uh, leaf pieces back down into their nests, fungus starts growing on these decaying leaf matter, and that's what the ants actually eat. Now, in the map of the world, the green actually shows the area where leafcutter ants are found, and so various varieties of leafcutter ant are found in most parts of the world, including Australia. And then we've got our gorillas. Okay, so you can see where they come or are found in Africa. The colour coding matching this, you can probably pause the video and zoom in if you want a close look or have a look for yourself when you get a chance. But they're ground dwelling and predominantly herbivorous. There's a good high modality word, predominantly. Means mainly, but it's a much more interesting word. And they inhabit forest areas of the central sub-Saharan Africa. And so you can imagine this is quite um, a high rainfall area being close to or on the equator. The genus gorilla is divided into two species, the eastern gorillas and the western gorillas, both critically endangered. So not just endangered, numbers are really low and it could be through hunting or it could be through habitat destruction. And then those are further broken into four or five subspecies. And they are actually the largest living primates. So you might decide that's something you want to find out a little bit more about, some of the animals that we've talked about here. Um, there's some interesting videos that you can have a look at to do with these animals. Anyway, guys, thanks. That's it for today. Have a great afternoon, and we'll catch you next time.